when I was a kid, uh, I was, I guess you'd call a Saturday matinee baby. My folks would just leave me there for the whole day. And the best free baby, well, not free, it cost a quarter to get in, babysitting service you could have. You know, would say there, Nitcho cartoons, a jungle movie, a western movie or something, and the cereal. All the time, a cereal. And it was so great. The only thing is, and it got most of the kids I knew, we had to wait a whole week for the next chapter. Now today, of course, with DVDs, you look all you want. But in those days, you went out thinking, i got to keep this in mind, what happened? He fell off a building, something happened. And then the next week, they do the slight recap, so in case dummies like me forget what it was, and you'd see it all over again. <laughs> Radar Men from the Moon, Republic. I think that's probably one of Republic's last great serials that they did. It was, they introduced a character that everybody kind of knows now that likes serials. Rocket Man. Commando Cody. Now, the original Rocket Man was done in 1949. It was, uh, you know, Jeff King. Republic did a lot of things with King as their name. King of the Texas Rangers and this kind of thing. They did that. But in this one... They thought, well, okay, we've got all the stock footage from Rocket Man we can use, for one thing. The Lidecker did incredible stuff on making this dummy fly and stuff. It was great. They had Davy Sharp doing a lot of the stunts, as only he could do. The man could fly. I, I really think he could. And the tumbles he did and everything. So, and then George Wallace, who was a pretty new actor at that time, uh, auditioned and actually got the role as uh, Commando Cody. And it, it just, it was really well written. Roy Barcroft, who was the stock heavy, he played the purple monster in the Purple Monster Strikes. Well, they had him in the same outfit as Reddick, the moon monster. He's a guy that's on the moon. Well, he had gained a little weight after 1945, because this is in the 50s when this was made. So he had the, the, the hood on, but most of the time he wore like a gown-type thing or a big robe or something. At the end, he had to have the outfit back on, but it didn't fit him too good because he'd punched out a little bit, and they say he just had to suck it in. That's about it. But most of it, well, it was, you could say stock footage from Purple Monster Strikes, I guess, because he goes and runs in his rocket ship, which is from the, the original Purple Monster serial. And it, but it was cut very well, and, and it, was, it was really received well. It's known as one of their last really good serials that they did, because Rocket Man became the phenomenon. I mean, he was really a guy that, because later on there was a spinoff series on that called Commando Cody, with Judd Holdren playing the role. And uh, so, I mean, it had quite a, a thing from 1949 on that uh, Rocket Man, or whoever you want to call him, or Commando Cody, he, uh, he surfaced in a lot, of, a lot of shows. I mean, he was great, you know, because everybody, the, the fans really loved Rocket Man a lot. And uh, I did. I mean, I know he was one of my favorite characters I ever saw. But Radar Men from the Moon, I thought, was done extremely well uh, for what it was. They, they went out in the desert. They shot stuff in, in rocks. They shot all over the place. And I know that uh, I know George Wallace said in that helmet out in the middle of the desert type of thing, it got pretty warm in all those outfits. And there were some, some of the bad guys were in Destination Moon spacesuits with helmets on their heads, which I'm sure felt like being out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, something in the middle of the summertime with fur coat and a bucket on your head. I'm sure that's what that felt like. And, you know, so it's, and wearing suits and stuff, I know that stuff is uncomfortable. It's obvious to it. But I, I thought it was really a good serial. It had good material. Uh, used a lot of stock footage from the old series, but they did a lot of brand new stuff, too. That was really, really well done. I mean, really good. It's one of my favorite serials. Now, the original serial to use Rocket Man was called King of the Rocket Men. That was in 1949. And then after that, it was in 52, I believe, I'm not sure of the date on that, is when Radar Men from the Moon was done as a serial. Then, right after that, television was coming in pretty strong. And so they did the Commando Cody, I guess Adventures of Commando Cody. And that was Judd Holdren starred in that one. And he did that. There were 12 chapters of that that they played. Each chapter ended, sort of, it wasn't a cliffhanger, but it ended and you knew they had to, the ruler was the bad guy. They knew he had to get him. So for 12 chapters that ran, and that was pretty good, but that was kind of the end of it. So you think about it from 1945 on up to the 50s, Rocket Man had, uh, had quite a run. He really did, for a serial character especially. He did really well. So uh, Rocket Man is still a great guy, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I, I, would, I would love to be Rocket Man. Well, I can't now, but I would have loved years ago. Now, there's another that I'd forgotten about, Zombies of the Stratosphere. 
Now, Judd Holdren was the guy in that, but he didn't play Commando Cody. He was never called Commando Cody in that one. He just had the flying suit. I can't even think of what his name was. Now, it used a lot of the same footage and, and the deals, in it, but the zombies were just guys looking like us with kind of dark patches around their eyes or something. But one of the most important guys in that film, who later on grew pointed ears, was uh, Spock. Leonard Nimoy was one of his first roles, you might say. He had done a few things, but that was one of his roles. And he's, he's featured you know, all the way through the serial. He, he's one of the bad guys. He's one of the henchmen. But uh, I think a lot of the fans, the Star Trek fans, probably remember it just for that, because that's where Spock was, right there. He was, he was already a, an alien, already an alien guy, you know, which is kind of cool. But it was a pretty good serial, too. They, they had this base under the water, and they had to go down under the water, and he went to a cave that was dry and all this stuff, but it was under the waters where they, they stored all their stuff. They're going to take over the Earth, like they all plan to do. But it, was, it, you know, it wasn't one of their better serials. But, but here again, it's the fourth time now that Rocket Man, or the Rocket Man suit, had been used. So that's a long run for, oh my gosh, I think that's a terrific thing to, to have for Rocket Man. Um, I was just thinking about Zombies of the Stratosphere. I'm uh, glad you thought of it. Leonard Nimoy uh, was at my college in Florida yeah. uh, doing a lecture where he uh, would read the current events in the newspaper and he would talk about them. But at one point he said, um, I, I'm not a big fan of the nuts and bolts kind of science fiction. And yeah. of course, from the back, I yelled, you mean like zombies of the stratosphere? <laughs> and he starts laughing. Oh, wow. And he says, he says, what the gentleman is referring to is a serial that I did in the 50s. Uh, um, he said, uh, you just have to excuse me. I had to eat. <laughs> That's true. A lot Pretty of actors funny. did. Yeah. So um, you want to say a few words about the... Um, the props that you have from uh, the the Rocket Man films, mm -hmm. uh, the props and costumes and such. Okay. Now, to show you how much I love Rocket Man, I actually have the original helmet and the jacket from Rocket Man. Now, a friend of mine, Don Coleman, made up the the little control button and the backpack because those were long gone, you know. And so he made those up. So now I have a complete Rocket Man in flying position in my museum hanging up. And, and I, I love that because it always reminds me of, hey, there's Rocket Man. I got him hanging up here, which is great, you know. But uh, I have a lot of props like that. I mean, different things. Well, costumes mainly. Uh, Captain Marvel's outfit, Spy Smasher's outfit, uh, Captain America, and different things that, that the guys wore. The Purple Monster was, was one of my favorites because that's the first movie set I was ever on as a kid. I was 10 years old, and I got to meet Roy Barcroft, who I didn't realize his secretary lived right next door to my folks and I. And, and one day I'm out in the yard, and I see Roy Barcroft, who I'd seen in a hundred of the movies because he always played the bad guy in the westerns especially. And after he left, I ran over and said, was that Roy Barcroft? And, and the daughter said, that lived there said, yeah, I'm his secretary at Republic. I had no idea. I kind of went into shock, and I said, oh, God, I'd love to meet this guy. He said, well, he's coming back over in about a half an hour. I'll bring him over. So here I was in my home, sitting there like, you know, how little kids do, just waiting there. And all of a sudden, there's a knock on the door, and Roy Barcroft walked in. And we were friends, well, till the day he died later on, you know. But he was just saying, he said, we talked about cereals and stuff. He said, well, I'm getting ready to do a thing. It was originally called the Purple Shadow Strikes, but on account of the shadow." They kind of owned that title. They had to change it to Purple Monster. And he said, as soon as he said Monster, then, wow, I perked up right away because I was a big Monster fan already. And he said, well, I'm going to be shooting in a week or so. Would you like to come over and watch us do this? I almost went into shock again. And so I did. I actually, he picked me up. I went over. One of the best days I've ever had in my entire life. I saw him do stunt work that I never even knew about. I didn't know about stuntmen, and that killed me because all of a sudden another Purple Monster comes from work walking out. And I'm thinking... There's two guys here. What's that? And he said, that's my stunt double. And I said, stunt double? He said, yeah, you think John Wayne and all those guys really do those falls off of horses and stuff? No, it's a stunt guy. And, oh, I was crushed. I mean, I was absolutely crushed by that. But it was really neat to see these guys work. I got to see them tear down a set and all this stuff in the, in the fights and things. And so that, here again, I'm 10 years old. So for a kid that loves cereals, wow. And then when Chapter 9 played of the Purple Monster, that's the one I saw them shoot. I was the king of the block. I told all the kids, we all went to see it, and I, I, as soon as I saw it on the screen, I remembered every piece of it. 
and and I think way down the line or something that must have that, that hit something in me and I said I got to be in this business somehow I don't, I don't know sweeping up floors or whatever I don't know what I'm going to do you know but I, I eventually did you know I worked with Paul Blaisdell in a few of the films I, I did a, a gorilla and some series and things I mean so I, I did kind of get a, a piece of it and of course I did Major Mars which is my own character which was an homage to Rocket Man it's exactly what it was a little seven minute little serial bit but uh, so and I'm still that way today I mean here I am an old guy I am older than dirt but I still love the serials I'm so glad they're coming out now and there's this new batch coming out that have been cleaned up fixed up and that is what I'm so excited about because I understand this stuff looks as good as it can possibly look so somebody out there loves this stuff as much as I do and I'm so thrilled to be able to talk about it. you're going to see some new serial stuff coming out. It's going to be so cool. You're just not going to believe it. You know, I was never disappointed, I don't think, in any serial I saw in the theater. Because it was a, an audience participation thing. All the kids, you'd yell at the, at the good guys when they're flying or whatever the heck they're doing or a fight. You, you'd almost boo at the bad guys and things. It was, it was a great thing in those days. We've lost that now. We don't have that. I mean, you've got TV, you've got video games and stuff. All the kids are into that, which is fine. But I think they're missing this great thing of being in the theater with all your other chums, all your buddies and stuff are all in there and, and get to see this stuff. It's on a big screen and it's just like the biggest thrill. You know, you go out of there thinking, boy, that was fun. Oh, it was really great. And I just feel people are missing that, especially kids today. And, and I, I'm glad I was there and got to see it. A lot of my friends, of course, like I said, I'm older than dirt, so they've only seen it on television. So they didn't get that same feeling. There was a theater in Hollywood called the Hitching Post years ago. And you'd ride your bikes, and they had a hitching post there. You could actually put your bikes there. And if you took guns in, you're supposed to check them as you go in, like you do in a saloon. Well, nobody checked them. Of course, they all took them in. And they'd show two or three westerns all the time. And another serial, all on, on a cartoon, whatever. But it was so great because it looked like an old western place when you went in. Everything was western-oriented. And it was so great because you thought, boy, I've been invited to this great western thing. And you went out, you know, and the kids are firing their cap guns off all over the place. But it was fun. I mean, everybody had a great, great time. Never anybody, you know, messed up or did anything wrong. They just had a great time doing it. You'd eat your popcorn or whatever it was. And it was, they were just fun times. They were such fun times. And, and it's like the midnight horror shows. They were the same way. They were a lot of fun, too. All that stuff's gone now. It's all gone. It's all history. And, uh... You know, I'm so glad that I have it up in here, what, what's left in my mind. Uh, and I, I try to think about it as much as I can and try to put it down or talk about it uh, like on DVDs like this, uh, just being able to get that information out so the people can get maybe a little feeling of what it was like doing these things. But going to the serials was just a big, big thing when I was a kid. And it was, it was from the, you know, the late 40s, well, actually early 40s actually, into the late 50s uh, when they finally stopped pretty much. Now, Republic still were the kings. Uh, Columbia was kind of okay. Uh, Universal was pretty good, especially with the Flash Gordons and stuff. But, but actually, if you had to pick one, it would be Republic because that's what they really kind of majored in. They really, really did. They, they went to the work of choreographing their fights, doing all the stuff that the other studios didn't do that much. But, boy, they were fun. They were fun to watch. I, I didn't care. I mean, if, if Batman's cape fell off, I didn't care about it. It didn't bother me. I'm still having a lot of fun. And that's, that's the whole point. You went in, you were entertained for a quarter, whatever it was at that time. Well, I think probably in the 50s, they went up to like 75 cents, you know. But that was it. You went there, and it was something to look forward to every single Saturday. You knew you had something to do, somewhere to go. And I'm sorry that that's not around anymore.